Hello. Welcome back. Glad you're here. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. Mm-hmm. Now, he is the door. He has the keys. By his sacrifice, by his stripes, we are healed. Um, and I know, I'm jumping all around. Um, Y'all need Jesus, Yeshua. And my hair's down. I don't have it tied up. Why? Um, because it's a little bit cooler today. Yay! It's only in the 80s, you know? And at nighttime, it's in the 60s. Woohoo! And a couple days ago, I'm like, God, please cool it down. Because it was like 100. But 100, hot 100. It felt hotter than that. But, answers prayers. When? At his timing, not ours. So who should we trust? Us or him? We trust him. He knows what's best for us. Um, last couple days, in fact, this last week, two. One's a prayer from a, a, a childhood prayer and before you go to sleep. And the other one is a song. Now, this is a kid's song, Pharaoh Jaka, um, and I've been pondering over it because I keep hearing the melody in my head, you know. Uh, are you sleeping? Are you sleeping, Brother John? Brother John, morning bells are ringing. Morning bells are ringing. Ding, ding, dong. And I learned it <laughs> amazingly in the French version, you know. And I had to look it up because I'm like, okay, Pharaoh Jacques, I remember that. I don't remember the rest of the words. Um, so I looked it up. My, but then it came to me like two days later, Brother John, Brother John, you know, out of the blue. I'm like, okay. So let's look it up. And it's about a, a monk who fell asleep. And uh, the kids were trying to wake him up because he overslept. And I think there is so much to that. Um, the church, Jesus is coming back for a bride, for a spotless bride, a bride in fine white linen. And you can read that in Revelations. Um, you know, and usually I dig this all up and give you all the, the, the books and the chapters and the verses, you know. And I, I'm like, recently it's, every one of us has to show ourselves, um, study, our, study ourselves to be approved, right? To be able to give an answer in time and out of time of what we believe and why we believe it. Um, there's certain uh, religions that are like, you have to believe with blind, blind faith. It's like, well, we walk in faith, not by sight. Okay, That doesn't mean to be just ignorant and going, well, whatever you say, I believe it. Okay, you know, uh, test First Timothy. Test the spirits. Test everything and hold on to what's good. You know, because there's deceivers and liars out there that want to give you truth and just a little bit of lie. Well, a little bit of sin or a little bit of leaven leavens the whole bunch. Okay? And so the nursery rhyme, Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Brother John, Brother John. Morning bells are ringing. Ding, ding, dong. Okay. Um, first off, church is asleep for the most part. Still living in the world. And... Uh, Every Sunday, go to church, and then the rest of the time, live like the world. Okay? We're supposed to come out of Babylon. Um, the funny thing is, uh, my middle name is John, and John means God is gracious, and yes, he is. Um, all through my life, uh, he has been gracious to me, more than gracious to me. 
uh, my birth, um, three months premature. I was a twin. I weighed one pound, 14 ounces. But that was three weeks later on the birth certificate um, because they didn't know if I was going to survive. So I weighed even less than that. You know, and I've had moments through my life where uh, brush with death. Oh, yeah, a few, a, quite a few times, you know, whether by drowning, car accidents, uh, uh, even a blood clot that almost took me out. But nope, you know, God said, nope, you're still here. He has a purpose, has a reason, you know. And every morning I wake up and this is where this all ties in to being asleep. Uh, First Corinthians, pretty sure it's Corinthians, um, 15, yeah, um, we'll go to, uh, chapter 15 and verse 38. Um, well, actually, well, let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and yeah, we'll just go through 1 through 5 or 6. Okay. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you that the gospel which I have preached to you, which you have received and which you stand, standing on the gospel, the good news that he has shed his blood and overcome uh, sin and death. So, verse 2, by which you are saved if you hold fast the word which I preach to you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day, according to scriptures. And he was seen by the Cephas, which is Peter, also known as Simon, Simon, Peter, Cephas, okay, then by the twelve. Now understand, Peter's not his real name, it's Cephas. Because um, they spoke Aramaic and Greek at that time, not Latin. Well, the Romans spoke Latin, but, um, anyways, we'll go on. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once. 500 people saw Yeshua, Jesus, after he rose from the dead. Okay? There's your witnesses. Um, and it says, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. Well, what, it, what do you mean? They fell asleep? They're sleeping? No, no, no. Jump down to John, chapter 10. No, t chapter 11. And the, okay, 11.9 which is 9-11 backwards, uh, Jesus answered and said, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he is sees the light of the world. Who is the light of the world? Jesus, Yeshua. Okay? So you won't stumble. You may stumble, but you won't fall down, and you'll get it back up. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. Now, who is the light? The Holy Spirit living inside of us? Mm -hmm. Now, he says in John chapter 11, 11, these things he said to them, and after he had said to them, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Then the disciples saying, Lord, if he sleeps, uh, he'll get well. They're thinking carnally in the flesh. He's sleeping, he's, you know, and he's going to wake up. So then Jesus, okay, John chapter 11, verse 13. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought he was speaking about him taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let's go to him. 
Now, did he raise Lazarus from the dead? Yes. Was he dead? Yes. Mary says it. Um, in in uh, John chapter 11, verse 17. So when Jesus came, he found that he was already been dead four days. He waited two days, okay, before leaving. Now, in John chapter 11, verse 21. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Yes, he had died, you know. But here's the thing. She says, but even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to you, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Last day. So at the last day, when is that? When heaven and earth pass away, right? The days are counted by what? There, didn't Jesus say in John chapter 11, verse 9? Are there not 12 hours in a day? They're counting the sun. The sun was created for light for the day, and the moon was the light at night. Okay? So the resurrection at the last day, when the sun and moon, the heaven and earth pass away, there'll be a resurrection. How soon after that? Well, don't know. It's the last day. It could happen at any time after that last day. But Jesus' response to her was, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She says, yes, Lord. I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who came into the world. Now, even though if you believe in him and you die you'll live and even and you will live and never die kind of contradictory if you think incarnally we die in the flesh but yet our soul lives on and you believe in him you'll never die meaning you will have eternal life believing in him he is the way now um, back to Corinthians, First Corinthians, fifteen, verse twelve. Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do you, some of you among, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection from the dead? the Pharisees and Sadducees, one group thought there is no resurrection from the dead. That you means you live your life and you die and you're done. Now, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 17, And if Christ is not risen, then your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. And then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. Your believing in your faith is, is useless if Christ has not risen. But in 1 Corinthians 15, 19, if in, if in this life only you have hope in Christ, we are all men the most pitiful. But now Christ has risen from the dead and I'm becoming the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Okay? For by one man came death, by also one man resurrection from the dead. For as in Adam all die, even in Christ all shall be made alive. But each to his own order. Christ the first fruits, afterwards those who are in Christ at his coming. Then comes the end, where he delivers the kingdom to the Father and he puts end to the rule all rule, all authority, and all power. He must reign until he puts all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy is death. So that when death is destroyed, all that's left is eternal life. Where? Either down 
lake of fire or in heaven. So, um, First Corinthians 15, verse 42. So also is the resurrection from, of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. This fleshly body is corrupted. Okay, and raised in incorruption. What does incorruption mean? Perfect, basically. And I'll keep going. It's sown in dishonor, but raised in glory. Sown in weakness, raised in power. Sown is a natural body, but raised in a spiritual body. There is a natural body. There is a spiritual body. What did Jesus say to Nicodemus? What's born of the flesh is flesh. What's born of the spirit is spirit. Okay? Nicodemus was still thinking carnally, going, how can a man go back to his mom and be born again in the flesh? He didn't understand. It was a spiritual thing. Our spirit goes back to God when we die. The silver cord is cut. That's in Psalms, I think. Psalms or Proverbs, the last book, 35. I remember that part. Um, the body goes ashes to ashes, dust to dust, right? We go back to the earth, right? Um, what's left? If the spirit goes back to God and the flesh is in the ground, dead, our soul. And he'll give us a new spirit and a new body that is incorruptible. That is a spiritual body. Okay? And 1 Corinthians 15, verse 47. The first man was made of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord, made of heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are made of dust. We are all made of dust. Right? In our composition, we are water and dust. Minerals, dirt, right? Okay. Because we are all of the lineage of mankind, which comes from Adam. But now there has been the Son of God, who is the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, came down here in the flesh, walked this earth, ate the Passover supper, died on the cross, and evil thought, well, we're going to kill him and we're going to take his inheritance and na 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 well you know what God uses evil for good so what they thought was victory was actually their defeat they would have never hung him on that cross had they known that he was going to be able to conquer uh, hell death and sin it just hasn't happened yet in terms of completion so 1 Corinthians 15, 49. And as we have been born of the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Now I say this, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. No sin can enter into heaven. But hold, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, see, remember that, die, just like Enoch and Elijah were taken. They were translated. They did not have to die. Okay? It says, In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Now, the dead are coming out of the graves, right? I think this is possibly the sixth seal where there's a great earthquake, the sun goes dark, the moon uh, doesn't give its life, and the stars fall from heaven, angels, right? That's Revelations 12, where a third of the angels are kicked down to earth and Satan, and they can no longer go back up, you know. Um, what better way for all the graves to open up if there's a massive earthquake, right? And the dead in Christ, because the Holy Spirit was inside of them, Spirit gives life. In fact, when... The, um, at conception, there's a spark, right? Giving life. I think that's when God puts his spirit in there and going, okay, that one's going to be a girl. And snap. And that one's going to be a boy. And I'm going to 
make them with green eyes, and then this one's gonna have brown eyes, and they're gonna have this one's gonna have black long hair, and this one's gonna be a blonde. You know, I mean, he chooses, he forms us in the womb. He already knows us, and this is the part where it's like, um, he knows the end from the beginning. So before he created heaven, earth, or anything around you that you can see or unsee, that's, you know, um, unseen, he thought of you. He thought of me. He thought of all of our life and what was going to transpire. But we have free will, yes, and he respects that, yes. He also knows who's written in the book of life and who isn't. Um... I, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 53. For this corruption must put on incorruption, and this more mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, mortal means death, right? That's Adam. And immortality, that's life. That's the Holy Spirit. Then shall be brought to pass the saying, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? For the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is a law. But thanks to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, or Yeshua HaMashiach. Therefore, my brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now, um, The other, and let me tie this together, I told you in the beginning there was a prayer, a childhood prayer that a lot of people said. I said it too. Um, and it, it fits with this. It's, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Amen. So, laying down to sleep, you pray the Lord that your soul to keep. He gets the spirit. Okay? And if I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Now, this hit me while I was contemplating about this video. Every There's baptism. Okay? You're dead to the old man, dead to sin, and you come up out of the water alive in Christ, a new creation. Okay. God is so great. Because he put this in my head. Every day, well, hopefully, you go to sleep, right? And do you know exactly, are you going to wake up the next day? When are you going to wake up the next day? Well, I set an alarm and I got to get up at six. Okay. Right? What if the alarm goes off and you're not waking up? Right? Right? My grandfather was granted a, a wonderful way to pass over in the sense that he had a great day, he had lunch, he played cards with his friends, um, he went home, he had dinner, he laid himself down to go to sleep, and he never woke up. That was his death, right? He died in his sleep. Um, did he feel the cutting of the cord? I don't know. I wasn't there. Um, but it, it kind of hit me. It's like every day is a new day. When God says um, that, I think it was David in the Psalms, it's like, his mercies renew daily. Um, every day is a blessing. You know, and all, like I said, in my close calls um, through my life, uh, it's a blessing. So I wake up and I give thanks to God. Thank you for one more day. And what can I do for you? What do you want me to do to honor you and the Father? And baptism in the water. Okay, you lie yourself down in your bed and then you wake up New creation, a new creature. Uh, okay, here's the point. Every day, from when you go to sleep and you get up, 
is a type of form of baptism. You go to bed at night, it's dark. Okay, you wake up and it's light. There will come a time when there's only light. And what do I mean by that? Uh, right now we're in a dark period. From Adam falling into sin, the spirit in us is dormant in a sense. Uh, hasn't woken up until God wakes us up. Some way, an epiphany in a sense, right? And then we are a new creation. Are we completely new? Well, there's a change of mind, a change of heart, a change of way that you looked at your past life and living carnally um, for yourself, for the moment, for whatever, right? To now being alive to Christ. And it's also reflective of, like in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 51, 52, will be changed in a twinkling of an eye. We'll no longer be in this fleshly body. We'll be in an incorruptible body that lasts forever. And it says that we'll be able to fly like eagles. We'll be able to run like deer and never get tired, right? The heat won't go get burn us, right? Um, we won't get hungry. A totally different situation than what we're in now. That is our hope, right? A lot of people look to the resurrection going, I'm going to escape all this bad stuff. Yes, it is, right? More, more to the point, um, it's a gift. Romans chapter 6, uh, 28, 23. The wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through his Son. That's our hope. We're looking forward to that day when we're no longer in these bodies and suffering. But more than that, it is a reward for being faithful and persisting. Um, and I'll go there really quick. Revelations chapter 3 verse 10 Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from that hour of trial which shall come upon the whole earth to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have. Let no one take your crown. And he says, if you overcome. Now, there's a hour of trial that comes on the whole world. Those that dwell on the earth. He's going to keep us from that hour. How is he going to keep us? Well, most people think that it's 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52, that we will be raptured, we will be translated, we will be changed in a twinkling of an eye. Um, there's also Revelations chapter 12. And the whole earth waits for the uh, revealing of the sons of God. And that's in Galatians. Um, okay, I don't have it right in front of me. Anyways, let's, uh, let's not waste your time by me looking. Uh, Revelations chapter 12. Verse 5. She bore a male child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and his throne. Okay. Who's the male child? Jesus was. He's male. He's going to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. Was he caught up to God? Yes. Is he at his throne? Yes. Um, and the woman fled into the wilderness. Now, who's the head of the the body of the church, body of Christ. Okay. And that doesn't mean Eucharist. Okay. Um, 
We are the body. He is the head. We will be changed in a twinkling of an eye. We will be like him when we see him. The body and the head will be reunited. Um, do we get to rule the nations? Yes, we are called to be kings and priests. Well, if you're a priest, you're in the temple of God offering prayers and worship to God Almighty. Okay, um, But if we're also going to be kings, we're going to be ruling with him. Mm -hmm. Yes. And also means we're caught up to God and his throne. Um, I know I'm jumping around a lot, but uh, yep, here it is. Revelations 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he who is part of the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests to God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Um, he is so good. He shows me things. Um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. Okay? lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. We have hope. And it says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus, those who have died. Right? Because he says it. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who asleep. For this is what we say by the word of the Lord. We who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who have all asleep, right? Who have died. For the Lord himself will descend with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet them in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. That's the best part of all of it. We will always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. Now, does this event of the dead rising in Christ and those who are alive be changed, translated in the twinkling of an eye, is that happening before the wrath or at the second coming? Well, here's the key, because I thought, well, it could work both ways, right? He comes in glory and then he raises the dead and then we are translated and then he destroys everything here on earth at, at his second coming, um, which is Revelation 19? But this one verse kind of changes it a little bit. First Thessalonians 4, verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Christ. So he's going to bring the dead with him, but the dead will be raised, and then we will be taken with them doesn't really matter. I mean, when we die, a lot of people think, oh, well, now we're in heaven. Um, I think we're, basically, as it keeps saying, we're asleep. We don't know the time span or the, the, the how long until the last resurrection, that last great day, right? Or when he calls us from the grave and we are raised, um, and resurrected, and that's in Matthew. Um, I should have looked this up. Um, but there's a point where the dead in Christ hear his voice, and they are raised first, and then there's a point where everyone hears his voice and raised from the dead. Um, that, I think, the where everybody hears his voice and is raised from the dead is the great last day of the judgment. Okay? Um, 
But the first call, the first resurrection, are those that are in Christ. Um, oh boy. I know, I've seen this so many times. I think it's 25, Matthew 25. Nope. Well, I'm sorry. I should have uh, prepared this one more in advance, but I'll do it from memory. Um, he says that those that are in Christ will hear his voice and be resurrected to glory, to honor, to righteousness, and then there'll be a time when everyone hears his voice and is resurrected. I think that is when the judgment comes. Now, okay, not going to waste your time. So, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test everything. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May now God, the God of peace himself, sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeshua HaMashiach. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do that. So, our, our righteousness is like filthy rags, meaning the washing and the regeneration of the Holy Spirit, think of water, right, on a cloth. You have to wring it out. You need soap, and you do it again, do it again, do it again, right? This constant rinsing and wringing out and getting all the dirt and filth out, right? So that we can be kept blameless. Our spirit, our soul, and our body blameless, a spotless bride for when he comes. God is working in the backgrounds. We don't see everything that he does, but he does things to protect us, to guide us, to move us. Um, and I told you about my grandfather. One of his favorite saying is, Life is what happens while you're busy making plans. What he was referring to is we choose the path, but God um, directs our steps. Okay? So, no matter how much we think we're in charge in God's... He gets the final say on everything. And you can see John in... Uh, um, John chapter, or no, Job chapter 1, okay? And um, there's a, Anyways, there's a thing where Joshua is standing before the throne and the angels, Satan's accusing him and God, the Lord rebukes Satan and then he tells the angels to take off the filthy garments that um, Joshua is wearing and to put on a clean, uh, clean robe, a clean turban, right? And he says, there, I have taken away your, um, your filthy rags, 
right? Your sins have been uh, forgiven. So, anyways, I didn't have that one prepared either, but, uh, so, are you sleeping, are you sleeping, Brother John, Brother John? Morning bells are ringing, right? When the dawn light shows, and who's the morning dawn light? Uh, Yeshua, okay? Um, He is in Revelations chapter 22. Um, Twenty-two, twelve. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, giving to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates. Um, Revelation 22, 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angels to testify to you the things of the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So, he is the dawn. He is... the one who's coming back and his reward is with him is with him so when the dead are raised and we are changed um, our reward is to be with him to see him not just to escape this what's going on now we are the last generation we will witness everything so he is the way, the truth, and the life, like he told Martha. You know, no one comes to the Father but by him. There's only one door, and it's narrow. Wide is the road to destruction, or the highway to destruction. You know? So, love you guys. Give this some thought. So when you go to sleep tonight, know that when you wake up in the morning, you have basically... God's giving you the example of every day a type of baptism so you can start new and cleanse yourself of all unrighteousness. Wear white linen by the testimony of God and by the blood of Christ. Love you guys. See you in the next video.